Hey, I'm Alex from Lumsden Agency. Welcome back to the monthly catch up. So last month we spoke about interest rates and rental returns. This month I'm sitting with John from Fortis Accounting Partners. We're talking about uh, the excitement of tax and capital gains. John, it's no secret the market's pumping right now. House prices are rising faster than they have for 32 years. Auction clearance rates are in the high 80s, even the 90s, which you know in winter is incredible. Um, it, it, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening right now. Obviously, a lot of people are, are making a big capital gain on, on a lot of their properties when they're selling. Um, what are some of the things that you're doing with your clients to mitigate the, the tax implications? Yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, so, yeah, good point. People are making a lot of capital gains, but can we go ahead and reduce them somewhat? So, firstly, it's about planning. How much capital gain are we likely to make? If we've got choices, then we can make a decision on what we do with our property. Do we sell it this year? Do we sell it next year? Or if we've got multiple properties, which one do we sell? Do we sell the one maybe which is under a different person's name who doesn't earn as much? If we've got choices, then we can make the plan and make it all minimised for us. So these choices you're saying are more about planning when people buy the property? No, more about when we sell. So when we do sell, which one do we sell? Or when we go ahead and sell them? Then after that, we can turn around and work out if we're gonna sell the property, make sure we claim all the deductions possible with reducing the capital gains. After that, there's ways we can reduce it as well. The ATO now provides substantial superannuation benefits and we can put some money into super that will help reduce the capital gains a lot. So if I sell right now and I reinvest the money straight away before the end of financial year into another property, is it still counted as, as income? Yeah, absolutely it is. So with capital gains based on the sale, so as soon as you sign a contract, they work it out individually with, um, with capital gains. So properties are, uh, unfortunately, if we sell it, we have to pay the capital gains on it. It doesn't matter if we buy something else in the meantime. Uh, so obviously everybody's situation is different, but it, it's coming to the end of May end of financial year is obviously very close, busy time for you. Um, what are some of the conversations that you would expect people should be having with their accountants around this time of year? Yeah, well, when it comes to property, the rules for property deductions change all the time with the ATO, or well, they change a little bit. It's a really good conversation to have with the accountant about, do any of the changes affect me? And if they do, what are they? And what can we do about that? So maybe keeping better records, having a look what we additionally can claim. Maybe what we can do is look to, um, you know, mitigate some of the uh, income we make by bringing forward some deductions such as prepaying interest, uh, prepaying some expenses for the property that you're going to pay in July and might as well pay in June. So all those things will help reduce the um, overall taxes that we pay from the property investment. So this is not just about selling now, this is about just rental income that's been coming out through the year. Absolutely. So rental income coming through, we want to go ahead and reduce the total net rent. So we've got a whole bunch of expenses that we can do. Um, we've got to make sure we can satisfy the rules and make sure we claim everything based on the rules that, that are provided to us. Tell me when you bring on a new client or somebody comes to you, you haven't been doing their tax before, what are some of the, specifically around property, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people have make or, or do make? Yeah, good question Alex. So the biggest mistake when it comes to property is the initial purchase. So when you're first buying the property. A lot of people buy the property in their name or joint together with their spouse or something. That by itself could be a mistake, could be also a good thing, but there's so many more options in regard to that. Do we buy it under the person's name that doesn't earn as much money? Do we buy it under the person's name who earns money based on the property giving negative gearing? Do we reduce the tax by incorporating trusts or self-managed super funds? The thing is, if you buy it under your name now, and it's very expensive to go ahead and change it later. So that's probably the largest mistake you can go ahead and make, which is gonna cost you more in capital gains tax in the future. John, for everybody out there that's watching, uh, tell me what are the three most exciting things about tax that you can think of? <laughs> three most exciting things, maybe some tips or something. So the first is plan ahead, right? So we're in the end of the financial year now. It's really good to speak to your accountant about things we can and can't claim. So you can get ready before the end of the financial year. Once the new financial year comes along, I always give the tip to my clients is get your taxes done early. If you're gonna get a refund, you might as well get it sooner. If you're gonna be payable, you might as well plan ahead and see how much you're gonna, you're gonna have to pay and plan ahead to see how you're gonna pay it or when you're gonna pay it. So at least you know in front of you. Mate, just to finish up, uh, in your experience, what are some of the weirdest things you've seen people try and claim on their tax returns? Oh, it's well documented that uh, people claim the weirdest things. So we've had, 
Uh, we've seen uh, some people try to claim potentially weddings as a, as a function. We've seen um, people claim their pets. They've bought a new puppy or something and they're trying to claim it as a guard dog. Um, and there was a lady in Queensland once apparently reported by the ATO that she tried to claim some cosmetic surgery because it made her look better to get a job. And uh, what did you do to get these past the ATO? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously all, all denied by the ATO. Awesome. So John, if people aren't having these conversations with their accountant, they're not picking up the phone, they're not being in contact, how can people get in contact with you if they want to make the jump? Thanks Alex. Um, look, we've got a great website. Um, we've got my details, Alex can pass on some details for us and um, you can get in contact with me if you've got any other general questions about property, about buying, selling or about the rental process itself and um, we can give them some tax advice to hopefully get them the best or minimise tax as much as possible. John, thanks for being here. Alex, thank you for having me.